that the country of the and to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So can you please take the roll? Here, Kenny. Here. Councilmember Cody. Here. Councilmember Zelensky. Here. Councilmember Pitsky. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Smith. Here. Councilmember Whitlin. Here. Councilmember Gusta. Here. Interim City Manager. Here. City Attorney. Here. DPW Director. Here. Finance Director. Here. Public Safety Director. Here. City Engineer. Here. Thank you. Public hearings, we have none. Citizen comments and agenda related items. Is there anyone in attendance who'd like to comment on tonight's agenda? None will move on to the consent agenda. All agenda items marked with an asterisk are on the consent agenda considered by the city manager to be routine matters. Prior to approval of the consent agenda, any member of council may have an item from the consent agenda removed and taken up during the regular portion of the meeting. Consent agenda items include <coughs> approval of minutes, approval of payroll, cash balances report, third quarter financial report, third quor quarter investment report, notification regarding special meeting, the next work session, consideration of proclaiming safe voting week, consideration of Manistee's Lions Club white cane sale, and consideration of the USS Liberty plaque dedication banner request. I'll make a motion that we, the council will take action to approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll second. I have a motion by Councilmember Goodspeed, supported by Councilmember Cody, to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there any discussion? Can you please take the roll? Councilmember Cody? Yes. Councilmember Zelensky? Yes. Councilmember Goodspeed? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Smith? Yes. Councilmember Woodland? Yes. Councilmember Gustin? Yes. And Mayor Kenny? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Unfinished business, we have none. New business. Consideration of council committee appointments. There are currently vacancies on the alternatives for area youth board and the Minnesota State Recreation Board. At this time, Mayor could take action to make various council committee appointments. Um, I'd like to appoint council member Zelinsky to the MRA board, and I'd like to appoint Mayor Pro Tem Smith to alternatives for area youth. I don't believe those need anything. Next, we move on to the consideration of the MSDDA budget for fiscal year 2015 and 2016. Manistee Main Street Downtown Development Authority <coughs> Board of Directors approved the 2015-16 fiscal year budget at their meeting of April 27, 2015 to be presented to City Council. The Board is now requesting that City Council approve the budget as presented. City Code of Ordinance Number 282.09B requires that the MSDDA to submit their annual budget to Council by the same date that the City Budget is required by charter to be approved, which is May 15th. Is there a motion to approve the Main Street Downtown Development Authority's budget? At this time, uh, I make a motion in council to take action to approve Main Street Downtown Development Authority 2015-2016 fiscal year budget. I'll second. I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Smith, supported by Council Member Goodspeed, to approve the Main Street Downtown budget is there any discussion comment questions patrick k is here if there's any questions okay see none can you please take the roll council member Zelensky? yes mayor pro tem smith yes council member Gustin? yes council member cody yes council member Gustin? yes council member woodland yes and Mayor Kenny. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of the utility service agreement with West Shore Medical Center. <coughs> West Shore Medical Center owns and operates a medical office building at 315 Oak Grove Street in Manistee Township. West Shore has expressed interest in having the property served by city water and sewer services due to a failing septic system. The city attorney has prepared and approved the agreement under consideration. Is there a motion to enter into the agreement? At this time, I recommend Council take action to enter into an agreement with West Shore Medical Center to provide water and sewer service to 315 Grove Street and to authorize the Mayor and City Clerk to execute the contract. Second. 
I have a motion by Mary Pro Tem Smith, supported by Councilmember Zelensky, to <coughs> approve the agreement with West Shore Medical Center. Is there any discussion? Please take the roll. Councilmember Vinsby? Yes. Councilmember Gustin? Yes. Mayor Kenny? Yes. Councilmember Woodland? Yes. Councilmember Cody? Yes. Mayor Patel Smith? Yes. Councilmember Zelensky? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. So we're going to take consideration of a contract for the repainting of the Maywood Water Tower. The city water towers are inspected every five years by Dixon Engineering. Dixon recommends the Maywood Tower be overcoated and sealed to extend the life of protective coating. Eight beds were received, the lowest bed withdrawn due to a clerical error. Dixon has recommended awarding the bed to the second low bidder. The city attorney has reviewed and approved the contract. Is there a motion to award the contract? I'll make a motion that council take action to award the contract to industrial painting in the amount of $139,800 and authorize the mayor of the city to execute that contract. I'll second. I have a motion by Council Member Gudstad, supported by Council Member Goodspeed, to approve the contract to industrial painting in the amount of 139,800. Just one point of information, if I may, I want to be clear that the sunset scene on the tank would be painted over, the paint would be white, and there would be a city logo on it. Just want to be sure that it was clear on that. Just to make sure that it's clear. Yes. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? I just, there is such a wide range of the bids, just to be clear that they all bid on the same package with the same. <laughs> I saw that. That was a question. Yeah. Jeff, do you have any concerns or any comments you'd like to make? <laughs> the entire bid package was put together by Dixon Engineering, it was publicly bid. Uh, the engineers weren't real surprised to see the wide range. Um, they usually see a small cluster that fits into uh, contractors of where they're working, the time frames, the schedule. Um, so they were pretty pleased at the at the low bid. Um, the actual low bidder that withdrew his bid got confused and used the square footage of our industrial tank for his bid, which is a lot less than the main wood tank. Um, once he realized that error, asked to have them withdrawn, so we withdrew it, but we're still quite a bit under budget. Okay. Any other questions? That's not, thank you, Jeff. Right, can you please take the roll? Mayor Pro Tem Smith? Yes. Councilmember Cody? Yes. Councilmember Woodland? Yes. Mayor Kenny? Yes. Councilmember Zelensky? Yes. Councilmember Gritsby? Yes. Councilmember Gustav? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Let's move on to consideration of refuse contract extension, Republic Waste. The current contract with Republic Waste expires June 30th, 2015. Discussion re with Republic Waste has resulted in a five year contract extension, as prepared and approved by the city attorney. The agreement includes a rate increase of 0% in the first year and 2% year thereafter. It also includes a new program that would allow one bulky item per customer per month during the first collection week of the month. The charge would be $740 per month to the city with no additional cost to the customer. City administration recommends approval of this contract extension. Recycling will continue to be a subject of discussion by council in the future. I'll make a motion in that council take action to approve a five year contract extension with perfect waste from July 1st, 2015 through June. 30th, 2030. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Goodspeed, supported by Mayor Pro Tem Smith, to approve the five year contract extension. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I can. Uh, just for clarification and for, for the public, um, the 740 a month uh, are the, uh, the what's, what's kind of the bulky one item per month? Can we explain that a little further? I'd be happy to. Um, at the first collection of each month, uh, whether that's a Thursday on May 1 or a Monday on the 5th, for example, each customer could put out one bulky item. Bulky item is not de defined in the text of the contract, except during discussions we talked about things like a couch, for example, or a table, or chairs. 
Uh, so one big item that you don't want to store in your garage for the next six, eight, 10, 12 months. Once a month, you could put that out. And the hope is that that would reduce our volume in the spring trash haul in 2016. And in fact, those savings would be used to pay for it. There would be no additional cost to the customer for that additional service. That $740 would be billed to the city. The city would pay it out of the combined fee income that we receive from the customers and from the tax levy that we receive from the tax levy. So this would be in addition to the twice a year, or once every two year major pickup? That's the current plan. Uh, if this works out exceptionally well, that may cause us to rethink whether or not that spring trash haul is necessary okay. or desirable. But the current thinking is that it would be in addition to rather than replace. Okay, thank you. Would there be any items not accepted? Um, the typical Freon related items, for example, refrigerators are treated separately and specially. Um, tires. Tires are treated separately and specially. And there's a few batteries are separate and different. But aside from those exceptions that most people are aware of, it would include any bulky item. And how would we get that information out to our customers? We're working on that with uh, the solid waste company in terms of them putting out information, we would put out information, we would likely include uh, some ads in the news advocate, and hopefully word of mouth after people start seeing a bulky item out there, how do you do that? Uh, and it's likely to take a couple of months and it will not become effective until July 1, but the working expectation is that the word will spread quickly. And this will go through the entire year? Yes. Even and it's included in the entire five-year contract. So regardless of what happens with Spring Trash Hall next year or the year after, this service would be in that five-year contract. Okay. Thank you. How about building materials? I mean, it's... Um... Building materials are not included. Okay. Um, and I think the working assumption there is that if you're undertaking a significant building project, the cost of the material disposal should be part of the cost of your project. If it's a miscellaneous two by four, then you just put that in with a weekly collection, cut it up to appropriate yeah. lengths. But if you've got an accumulation of uh, material from a building project, then that's your responsibility along with the rest of the costs of that building project. I was, I was uh, thinking about just some asphalt shingles. You know, people have a, a square left or- If there's like relatively small and confined quantities like that, I would expect them to be included. Okay, thank you. A pile of building debris, I would not expect right. to be included. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions? Can you please take the roll? <coughs> yes. Councilmember Gastet? Yes. Councilmember Cody? Yes. Councilmember Zelensky? Yes. Councilmember Goodsby? Yes. Mayor Kenny? Yes. And Mayor Pro Tem Smith? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. <coughs> Next. We'll move on to notices, communications, and announcements. A regular part of each council meeting is report from a cooperating agency, organization, or department. Tonight, we'll hear a report from the Alliance for Economic Success. Uh, having to do on one end with a new patent pending product where we have a uh, 
a major, actually Michigan's oldest uh, four year university involved in helping the inventor understand how to scale this product up and manufacture the NSD to um, um, a project that would um, get involved with secondary processing of locally grown foods. Um, another project involving aquaculture um, here within the city. Um, importantly, um, and one that I hope uh, all of you will take an interest in and an active role in is we'll be uh, um, beginning soon a process of health manufacturing strategy for the county. And that strategy will involve the manufacturers. We've met with them. They strongly endorse the project. But it will also involve uh, not only traditional manufacturing, but we'll also get into food manufacturing, value-added processing, and that project will be kicking off um, later this month. Other business and job development initiatives we have underway in the county, uh, Portage Point Inn, we had a great meeting last week with the community on that plan, which would create 100 new jobs. Um, some of you um, joined in the ribbon cutting, I know the mayor did, uh, at the new Meyer um, uh, in Manistee Township, which uh, created 270 jobs, 25% of which are full-time jobs. And we even are working with a distillery that by this time next year should be in full operation in Northern Manistee County. So we've got a mixed bag of things. I also want to mention um, two other things that are significant to Manist the city of Manistee. We're working with uh, an existing and longtime manufacturer in the city that is interested in doubling his size. And uh, he has all the work to do that. And it's just the process of going through and linking himself with the resources and the right people um, to do that. So we're very optimistic that we'll have something more firm to talk about soon on that project. Another initiative that we have been uh, principally involved with, which I think is significant, is bringing Baker College to Manistee County. Baker College is the oldest private nonprofit four-year university in the state of Michigan. They have a rate of 97% of their students um, step into jobs in business, and their primary focus is business. They do a lot of occupational training, and long story short, they are now teaching classes here in Manistee County using facilities at MCC in the evening, and they will also be teaching classes this summer at MCC. And so we think that that is a great addition to the county and one that students uh, will take advantage of. Um, in the area of community development, again, things, new things that are impacting the city. Uh, many of you have probably already participated in a countywide recreation plan where all the local governments in the county um, are partnering and agree to participate. Uh, that will give us enormous leveraging capacity to develop funding for projects. Uh, we are also in the beginning stages of a US 31 uh, corridor plan uh, that would track from Filer through the city of Manistee, at least up into and through Manistee Township. Um, we will be reconvening your Harbor Commission uh, at some point in the next couple of months um, to update uh, their strategic plan that we helped them facilitate last year. Uh, and we're also working with, this is the time of year where we meet with a lot of funders and outside interests. And recently uh, we've met with USDA Rural Development, uh, the office of U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow. Uh, we'll be meeting soon with the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Uh, Department of Transportation and the Economic Development Administration. I, I want to add that our primary focus this year in meeting with the federal and the state departments is on capital improvements. And we look forward to supporting um, the city in that regard as well. Uh, resource development, which is the area that I primarily uh, <coughs> focus on, uh, we are nearing uh, approval of a $700,000 loan application. Uh, that we submitted on behalf of the Bogue Theater that will uh, improve their cash flow, reduce their monthly debt service. Uh, we're working for multiple sources, and I think late this afternoon we finally figured it out, to uh, secure funding uh, to develop a, a, biz a viable business strategy for the Ramsdale Theater. Um, we are all, I was also informed earlier today that we will be receiving grant funding from the United States Department of Agriculture and Rural Development to support um, uh, funding for our manufacturing st strategy. Um, there's a new initiative in Manistee County called Launch Manistee, which is aimed at some um, 
fairly very important goals involving uh, early childhood as well as access to college and two-year certificates. Um, our office has been the primary organization that has raised funding uh, for Launch Manistee. We're also seeking funding uh, for a, um, a new initiative that corresponds to your strategic plan uh, with Networks Northwest to develop a comprehensive development-ready housing strategy um, for the area. And that is a very badly needed thing uh, for Manistee County. We simply do not have the places to live for the workers that we need to hire. So, looking ahead, <laughs> um, we, uh, people have been appointed, I think both at the city and the county level, and sort of with an ADS board, uh, to begin discussions on a new work plan uh, with the city. One of the things that we do not have, that we have had every year since 2007, when the AES began facilitating um, your strategic plan, is a completed strategic plan that laid out <coughs> what your expectations were for the AES. So whether we complete that plan um, immediately or not, what we would like to do is revisit with you um, the goals and objectives for economic development that are in your existing plan and update those where necessary as part of that process. So we look forward to supporting um, your strategy going forward. Any questions? Thank you, Tim. I appreciate all the work. There's a lot of projects you guys work on. It's usually mainly under the radar, and they, I don't think people really appreciate the amount of time it takes from start to finish um, on, on all these projects that you do. So thank you. Thank you very much. much. Next, we'll move on to concerns and comments, citizen comment. This is an opportunity for citizens to comment on municipal services, activities, or areas of city involvement. Citizen and attendant shall be recognized by the mayor for comments, which are limited to five minutes. Letters submitted to council will not be publicly read. Is there anyone who'd like to comment? Please state your name and address. Carol Pascoe at 610 Spruce Street. I just sort of had a question about the recycling program. Is the negotiating that's going on something that will apply to can be applied to the current contract for five years, or is that something that won't happen for another five years? No, I, yes. the way it's stated, I, I wasn't sure exactly what it meant. Sure. I know you can't answer questions, but um, it just said it will continue to be a subject of discussion in the future. Does that mean five years from No, I think we, we're working, we're we'll be working on that recycling contract. We just didn't want to hold up the refuge contract, but we do plan on- We could have a separate. Right, and we would roll that over into the recycling or into the refuge contract. Is there any other comments or questions? Let's we'll move on to officials and staff. Councilmember Cody. Ah, uh, yes, it's good to see the water at Fifth Avenue Beach. They got the bulldozer down there and plowing down those big dunes over there, so that's looking good. Thank you. Councilmember Slonsky. Nothing, Your Honor. Nothing here. Okay, Nothing. Here. Council Member Whitlock. Uh, just a couple things. Um, just want to thank Chief Bachman and his crew, plus the sheriff and the SEM team for, or, uh, I believe it was the SEM team for uh, quick work on the drive-by shooting. Yes, sir. Taking care of him, getting that off the streets. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, a little shout out to Matt and Lindsay Sigorski, the new owners of uh, Ramsdale. In and TJ's pub. Thank you for putting your uh, confidence in downtown Manistee. And uh, the last one is the Recycle Center at the City Garage. I was there the other day, Saturday, and, uh, and I know we talked about this before, but people leaving paint cans and miscellaneous crap there again. Um, we're going to lose it if, if you if that continues. So please stop. Councilmember Gunston. Thank you. Speaker. Um, election's still going on. The case nobody, anybody missed voting until eight o'clock. <laughs> In terms of the manager? Nothing, Your Honor. City Attorney? Nothing, Your Honor. Thank you. Public Safety Director? Nothing, Your Honor. DPW? Nothing, Your Honor. Finance Director? Nothing, Your Honor. City Engineer? Nothing, Your Honor. I have nothing, so I'll take a motion to adjourn. To I have one thing. I will not be here next week. Because I'll be out of town.
Okay. And I'll make that motion. And I'll set Down towards the bottom of the hill, there's a lot of double mains that serve uh, the homes down there. So we're going to be in the office to have conversations or clarifications with the finance director and myself. But collectively, we've noted three substantive changes to the budget as directed by the city council. Uh, the first was to change the part-time position in the clerk treasurer's office to a full-time position accomplished by tightening up some of the parameters in the police department budget based on our newer information regarding promotions there and delaying the start date of that new position by three months. Uh, the second substantive change has been to increase the funding for the street program from $417,000 per year, not per year, for the anticipated budget to $500,000 for the forthcoming budget. That accomplished by adding $83,000 in a transfer from the oil and gas interest earnings. Uh, for the third substantive change that we've noted is to modify the water and sewer rate increase, deferring a portion of that rate increase for one year so that it would be 6% effective July 1 of 15, and again, the 6% July 1 of 16. So those are the substantive changes that we as staff have made in the budget. You haven't received those new pages yet, pending the outcome of today's discussion. Uh, but our expectation would be that those changes, plus any additional changes you would like to make tonight, would be reflected in a revised document that you would get with your agenda packet in anticipation of a special meeting one week from tonight uh, to adopt the budget. And the final point is I would remind the council that the charter requires budget adoption by May 15. One week from tonight is May 12. So if for whatever reason adoption couldn't occur on the 12th, then we would need a subsequent special meeting either Wednesday or Thursday of next week in order to meet that charter deadline. Tonight's purpose is really to give the council one more opportunity. The reason I hesitate on council is because some are commissions in your council and sometimes I have to check myself on which is the terminology, I apologize. Tonight's purpose is to give one more chance for the council to take a look at the budget, raise any additional questions, make any additional changes you would like to make, um, and basically one more opportunity for discussion on the subject. You guys, anything else you guys want to discuss? I have a, I have a question about the water rate increase. Okay. Is, if we go six and six, is that going to put us where we need to be so we're not having to borrow money down this, the road? Is that, is that going to work out okay? As we indicated uh, a week ago or two weeks ago, there may be some short-term cash flow issues that may require some internal borrowing, uh, but that would be a cash flow issue more than an actual financial problem. If it develops into more than that, we would come back to the council with that information and recommend a solution at that time. We don't expect it to be an issue. Another question just from my information. <clears throat> Water rates, sewer rates, can they be adjusted through both the year? Yes. And just to clarify, we made no changes in our capital budget funding, correct? The projects that we're going to do. Correct. Uh, the only exception would be the additional funding for the street projects with the project to be accomplished yet undetermined. That would come back to you as part of a bid package sometime in the future. Because we have the waive signings and the heart monitor. All of those remain. Okay. At this juncture. Okay. Any other questions or concerns about the budget? Do you guys want to yes. Okay. The DPW, uh, we talked about having a assistant director yes. for Jeff Kula. Um, wondering about that, we're going to be taking somebody out of the work pool. To appoint to that position? Yes, but also backfilling that position so we end up with net additional bodies in the labor force. Uh, I believe the numbers were if we take what is currently 20% admin and 80% labor, 
take that position and turn it into effectively management, we would backfill with another body and gain that 20% that's currently being dedicated to admin. So we would backfill but end up with more FTE in both positions, labor and management. What, how many people are we talking, bringing in, bringing in younger blood to the, to the work group? At this juncture, that would be one additional FTE. However, we have a number of retirements pending. I don't know the exact count. That the current expectation is that we would replace all of those positions. Uh, whether they're young, middle aged, or older, I certainly can't tell you. But new blood, I should say. New blood. New blood, I'm sorry about that. So uh, the expectation is that we would backfill all of them. Okay. And then the, the hiring process, in, then you may be, you know, out, uh, you know, retired fully. <laughs> uh, Hopefully. <laughs> but the plan when. Uh, when a, re, when a person retires out of DPW is to have somebody immediately come in or are we going to be shortchanged with the workforce again? There's a fairly extensive process, particularly depending on where that vacancy occurs. And that often involves having to post a position for internal applicants, uh, posting it for other city employees before you can actually post it for outside retention. So it can be a fairly extended process, much of that dictated by union contracts. Mm -hmm. But the expectation is that we would go through that as expeditiously as possible to backfill based on the fact that all of those positions are currently in the budget. If at some future point a position wasn't in the budget, then it would be a different answer. When we fill those, is there typically enough time given that when they're gonna retire that you could bring somebody on before the retirement? or training? Uh, that likely would not occur and likely would not be necessary because they're part of a larger crew. If mm -hmm. it was a single person position, there might be an advantage to some training period. Mm -hmm. um, but with EPW labor, I really wouldn't see that. And there wouldn't be a budgetary allocation for that necessarily. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, not at this point. There were a couple of our